Hi, I'm going to show you how to translate text using Python and piping that function over into Power BI. So I'm in Power BI now and I have a Game of Thrones data set with the episode name and the IMDB description and we can see that that's in English, but I've created a a bookmark here that switches that over to Japanese and that is being translated using a library that exists in Python. So I'm going to show you how to create a function that you can easily apply to other data sets. So let's get started and we're going to do all of this in the script editor. So I'll start uh, this over for us, so I'm going to go to our Power Query Editor. So I'm going to go to Transform and just show you, and then I'm going to write the script. So what I have now is the Game of Thrones data, and I've, I've applied my Python script here. But before we look at the script, I'm going to take you through line by line to show you how this works. So I'm going to just duplicate this. And once it's duplicated, I'm going to get rid of the steps all the way down to Python script. And let me take you quickly through the data set. You can see that we have season, episode number, the number of seasons, the episode name, uh, the director. So episode name, you would be able to apply a translation to that. Um, we have the writer, that's someone named, so that wouldn't, translation wouldn't apply. But this is a very rich section for changing a language over to, um, from English to something else. So we're going to isolate this column for our translations. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to transform in the top ribbon navigate back over to run Python script. And now we're going to write all of this within the script editor. You can do this in, uh, you know, an IDE like Jupyter Notebook or something like Spider. But I'll just show you how to write this because it's not a lot of code. So the first thing we want to do, uh, let's document our code. We already see that it indicates that data set holds our data. So this table that you're looking at is saved in a variable called data set. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight what I want to do here. So I'm going to import our translation library. And that's the first part. So I'm going to make a little space so this looks very clean. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import, sorry, from, from text blob, which is our library, I'm going to import the text blob function. So you can see it's text blob all lowercase and then I'm going to import text blob. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function for translation. And the way you create a function in Python, we start with DEF which defines the function. I'm just going to call it translation is the name of my function. And then what a function does is it takes a amount of code or amount of instructions that you can repeat. So my we have our translation function, same as what you would see in something like Excel where you would see a function look like this with the parentheses. So my function is just going to take one thing and that would be the sentence that we want to translate. Now we could call it sentence or we can call it X. I'm going to call it sentence to make it or, or text maybe to make it very clear. So it's going to take our text. And what we're going to do is once we're in that function by putting our colon, we're going to hit enter and then tab because we need to indent to add our instructions within inside this function. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called blob and blob is just means this is our text. So and but you can call it anything you like. But I because we're using the text blob library, I'm going to use blob. So then I'm going to use text blob and then I'm going to pass it the sentence that we're looking for. So now it holds that sentence within that uh, function and we can do things to it. So once we have that, I'm going to say, hey, return the blob because we have that as a variable and I want to translate that sentence and then I'm going to use translate function from language and the language that we're going to be translating it from is English which is indicated by EN and we want a 2 equals let's say Japanese which is JA and I'll give a link to the abbreviations that you can use now in order to get this to work we need to make sure we are very explicit to say translate that but just to make sure I want to return a string back I'm just going to wrap this function in string so now we've created our function so we can apply that to any text that we're looking for now what I want to do is apply that to our data set so we know we have the data set and then I want the IMDB description So I want to apply it to that column and I apply it by using a function called apply and then I pass in inside that function my actual translation function that we've created. Now if I apply that it's it will apply but we want to be able to create a new column in order to do that we just use data set again which is the name of our table and we just write translation in and then equals and now we have a new column where we're going to apply our translation function so let's run that to see if we have any issues and we do a uh, sentence is not defined so let's go back up and see where I made a mistake oh you can see what I've done here is instead of using this which is our placeholder I wrote sentence so let's just erase this and add text and run that again so always make sure you read your errors because you know it's programming it's easy to make some small mistakes so what returns is a table and that table we can open up and now what we'll have at the end of our data frame is our Japanese translation of our IMDB and I'm going to move that over so you can see it right next to it is our translation and what you'll see is a lot of the names don't get translated here um, which is the right thing to do because not all of them can be translated into Japanese. So let me quickly show you some of the languages you can translate this into. This is a table here. Man, let me make this a little bit bigger. And you can see here are all the languages that you can possibly translate into or from. So please feel free to explore and uh, see what kind of functionality you can create this is a I'll put the link to this website so you guys can look at it but let's go back over to our power bi I'm just going to close and apply this and kind of show you quickly how I made this very easy visual so this 
visual is working off bookmarks. So we use English and Japanese. And all I've done is created a bookmark. Let me duplicate this to show you. There are two bookmarks and the bookmark is hiding one of the tables. So there's two tables here. One table is under this, the other table is there. So, you know, if I click this off, we can see that there's two tables here. If you see behind, I have the table in front and the table in back. And all I'm doing is I attached a button here. And from this button, which is here, You can see the button has an action attached to it and it's just linking to one of those bookmarks. So that will easily let you change languages. So you can see there's a lot of functionality to this. You can take that function and apply it to the episode name also, if you would like. Um, and you could create a whole host of different languages to translate this into. I hope that's interesting and helps you work on some of your projects and make them a little bit more interesting. Thank you. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.